Welcome back. Today we are doing Transforming Moments by Tina Mshlope. And if you stay tuned to the end, I will give you one extra tip that will help you in this paper for the following two exams. So let's get started. As always, we have a short summary. The story is about a 17-year-old girl with little self-confidence. She is also the narrator of the story. She has a very low self-esteem and she believes that she's very ugly. She mentions that her hair is like dry grass in winter. She mentions that her clothes are old-fashioned and she mentions that she has an ugly ugly voice because she was kicked out of the choir. She is, however, a brilliant learner. She reads a lot and obtains excellent marks. But knowing girls and teenagers actually in general, some girls are only friendly because she's willing to help them with their schoolwork. The other girls then tease her. They say that no boy will ever be interested in her because she is ugly. However, to everybody's surprise, sees where a handsome rugby player of all things from Port Elizabeth asks her to be his girlfriend. She then thinks he's completely crazy. Why would he be interested in her? She's definitely not interested in him. She only wants to concentrate on her studies. She's there to study, not to sleep with boys, she tells him. However, he perseveres and they become good friends. She continues to concentrate on her schoolwork, which obviously pleases her sister, who is the one paying her school fees. The narrator also helps out in the church, and the minister, Father Fakeni, insists that she joins the church choir after being thrown out of the school choir. The conductor of the school choir told her that she had to sing with the boys tenor if she wanted to still be in the choir, and she gracefully decided to leave. Then Father Fakeni tells her that she definitely does not have an ugly voice, she has a resonant voice. She's also involved in doing the flower arrangements in church. She's one of the three girls who do that. And she notices that Father Fakeni likes her. But she also mentions that perhaps it should not be so surprising because everybody has somebody in life who likes them without any reason. Father Fakeni and his wife go to visit their family in Tsolo one weekend and he invites her to accompany them. The narrator describes the minister's wife as someone who doesn't talk much, but she wishes that she could be as beautiful as the minister's wife. The minister takes the narrator to a meeting at the chief's place and she watches Tira, the praise poet or the Imbongi, and she is in awe of his skill and his language use. She decides then and there that she also wants to become a praise poet. Upon returning to the school that Monday afternoon, she goes and lies under the black wattle tree, as was her habit, and she writes her first poem. She reads it aloud to herself, and she realizes that she has a beautiful voice. And she wonders if this was what resonant means. For the first time in her life, she starts to love herself. Remember how she touches her face and she touches her cheekbones and she tells herself everything was just perfect. And she decides she will be the first female praise poet. And she knows Father Fakeni will be happy for her. So her trip to Tsolo turns out to be the turning point of her life a transforming moment. As you know, whenever we have finished reading a story, we first find out what is the relevance of the title to the story we have just read. And to transform, we know means to change from one state to another. And in this story, the narrator changes from someone who has a low self-esteem, she calls herself Miss Ugly Top of the Class, to a confident young woman who has a dream within a very short space of time, actually within one weekend. And this transformation is due to her meeting with the praise poet or the Imbongi, his name is Tira, the narrator point of view from which the story is told. We know this is a first-person narrator. We also know that this is actually the life story of Trina Mklope because she is a praise poet. She uses first-person pronouns like I and we, so the story is told from her point of view. The narrator 
is in other words the main character and she is as the story starts a young girl who suffers from a lack of self-confidence she tells her own story how she undergoes a personal change to become a confident person who loves herself here we have the plot diagram which explains to us how the story is told remember that i have explained this extensively in the first two analysis videos that i made I will link them in the end screen and you can go and listen to that explanation. This plot diagram, remember diagram, American spelling here, but we also call it the Freytag's Pyramid. So let's determine how the story is told. The setting, which is actually part of the exposition, is a boarding school somewhere in the Eastern Cape where the narrator attends school. Then the minister's family home is in Tsolo in the Eastern Cape. And there you can see where Tsolo is. It is one of those tiny villages where if you blink at the wrong moment while driving past, you will miss it. Now the structure and the plot development of the story, the exposition where we meet the characters, so we meet the narrator. She's a 17 year old when the story starts. She lacks confidence and she feels unsure of herself. Why? Remember we said she describes her hair as dry grass in winter. She does not have fashionable clothes like the other girls do. And then on top of it all, she is intelligent, so she does not see that as an advantage at all. The rising action. The narrator meets Sizwe, the rugby player. Obviously, many of the girls stop talking with her about this incident where he asks her to be his girlfriend. Her English teacher, remember, he thinks it was rather amusing that she had set the school on fire with all the rumors running around. And they end up being good friends because Sizwe is actually a kind boy. The narrator, as we heard in the summary, frequents the church. She helps with the Sunday flower arrangements. She joins the church choir at the insistence of Father Fakini, and she had the feeling that the minister liked her. All of this is setting us up for the climax because the story has to move towards the climax. So all of this information is rather important to get us there. Father Fakini takes her to Tsolo to visit his family where she meets the praise poet. The climax is where she experiences his performance, his movements, his language use, and she is utterly in awe of what she sees. She decides that night to become a praise poet herself, and she feels baptized when he touches her, when Father Fakeni introduces her to him and he greets her by hand. She feels baptized by this encounter. It was a question in one of the previous exam papers when they asked what does this baptism mean and the answer in the memo was as a church goer she felt she was introduced to poetry by the Imbongi so that she could also be a praise poet like him. So it was actually more like a kind of an anointing. Remember the falling action cannot be as long as the rising action otherwise the writer would lose the reader's interest. So in the falling action Action. She's back at school on that Monday and she writes her first poem under the black wattle tree. And after reading her poem aloud, she realizes that she has a beautiful voice. Resolution or denouement, the narrator falls in love with herself. She realizes that everything is absolutely fine. She develops a positive self-image and she gains confidence. She feels that she can become the first female praise poet. Characterization, remember, they often, usually, ask a comparison question where you have to compare the characters of two people in the short story or you have to discuss which character traits of whichever character appears in the extract are apparent in those lines that they refer to. So characterization is important. And if you know this, you can answer many of the other questions. So the narrator, who does not have a name in the story, but we do know that this is Trina Mklope because this is her autobiography. She is a round character because she develops during the course of the story. She experiences both inner conflict in herself because she thinks she's ugly, she thinks that she is inferior to the other girls, and she experiences outer conflict when the girls are quite nasty with her, not only a 
about her clothes and her appearance, but especially when Sizwe shows an interest in her. She's emotionally weak. I don't quite agree with this statement in your mind, the gap study guides. Yes, she is self-conscious. She has a low self-esteem, but is she emotionally weak? In spite of the fact that she has a low self-confidence, she still performs academically. She does not experience a lot of joy. She tells us that life goes on as usual. It's not as if her life has ups and downs. But I do not think that she's emotionally weak. But what is true is that she lacks confidence and she has low self-esteem. She is intelligent, she obtains high marks at school, which pleases her sister, remember? And after her meeting with a praise poet, she is transformed. She learns to love herself and she becomes confident. Do you see how often the same facts repeat in every new heading? So if you know the basics, you can answer most of the questions. And after meeting Thera, she is determined to pursue her talent as a woman praise poet. Then we have Father Fakeni, the minister. Father Fakeni loves his family. He loves his wife. He goes to visit his family, which means he likes them. Otherwise, he wouldn't go visit them. And the village community. He is able to recognize talent. He encourages the narrator to join the church choir. And he says she has a resonant voice. He is caring. He takes her to visit his home and he introduces her to the prayer poet because he recognized her talent. He could have just left her, but no, he realized that she needed to see this Imbongi. Now, Tira, the praise poet or the Imbongi, he is talented and inspirational. He is admired by the narrator and by many people from the village, as can be seen after his performance when everybody wants to talk to him. He is approachable. He is quite open to meeting new people, to meeting the narrator. He is humble. He is friendly. Bulelwa. Remember Bulelwa who sings in the choir? And the narrator thinks that she has such a beautiful voice that she wishes that she could record her and listen to her whenever she wanted to. She is a true friend. She loves the narrator unconditionally and she's trustworthy. She stands by her even when others mock her. She is also the narrator's study partner sometimes under the black wattle trees. Sizwe, the rugby star, he follows his heart. He likes the narrator regardless of what the other girls say about her. He is self-confident. He approaches her. He asks her to be his girlfriend. And in other words, he has good intentions. He befriends her. He says, we can read if you want to read. You don't have to sleep with me. We can just spend time together. The themes. The theme is what the story is about. So if you have to tell somebody what the lesson in this short story was, that would be the theme. The moral of the story, sort of. And because writing is complex, people are complex. There will never be only just one theme. If you know these themes and you understand the basic points of the story, you understand the basic analysis, then you will be able to answer even other themes. So the first theme, and the one that has been asked twice already, is the theme of self-discovery or self-love. The narrator discovers what makes her happy and fulfilled. Initially, she hates her look, her unfashionable clothes. And she considers herself ugly, Miss Ugly top of the class. She hates her voice because she gets kicked out of the school choir. Her academic success doesn't help her to feel more confident because you know yourself that clever girls at school are sometimes shunned because people feel inferior. And then she doesn't believe a boy can be attracted to her or love her. Besides the fact that the girls tell her no boy would ever be interested in her, she thinks to herself when Cizwe asks her to go out, is this guy crazy? And then she decides, well, he has eyes. He can see what she looks like. The other girls have have made her feel bad about herself. But then after meeting the praise poet, and by this time Sizwe has left the school, remember? She discovers her talent for poetry. Remember she was writing before this. Her essays used to be good examples read in class. But now she discovers that she can also write poetry. And she realizes that she does indeed have a beautiful resonant voice. She has found that she feels passionate about something and she accepts herself, loves herself, looks forward to the future.
the theme of jealousy. The girls at the school are envious or jealous of the narrator because she's intelligent, hardworking, and she attains top marks. They are even more jealous when Seasware shows interest in the narrator. So you do see how these themes tie together. It is an academic process to separate the themes, but everything is intertwined. They make nasty remarks about her looks and her clothes. And finally, the girls are jealous because the minister takes her away for a weekend. I'm not quite sure that it's mentioned somewhere in the story. That's why I put a question mark there. I'm sure it has something to do with interpretation. She's in and out of her dormitory room so quickly that I'm not quite sure that she even had time to notice whether they were jealous or not. They were very curious indeed why she was packing. But knowing the girls like we learn to know them in the story, the jealousy is quite possible. The theme of friendship. There are different types of friendship in the story. In the first place, we have the fake friends, the girls at school who only befriend the narrator because they need her help with their schoolwork. So they use her because she's intelligent and hardworking. Then we have Siswe, who is a true friend. They get off to a bad start, but eventually they become good friends. They are kind to each other and they enjoy each other's friendship. And then we have the friendship that she has with Father Fakini. He motivates and inspires her to grow and develop to her full potential. The theme of confidence. Confidence ties in with self-discovery very closely. Although she lacks confidence at the beginning of the story, she becomes confident about certain things. In the first place, her ability to write poetry, the use of her unique voice, for reciting poems, her physical appearance, and she doesn't allow the comments of others to affect her anymore because she tells herself everything is just fine. The style of writing, it's an informal register, which is quite suitable because we have a narrator of 17 years old. She's in standard nine, which is now our grade 11 when the story starts. The use of contractions always shows us informal register. And then a compound word that she coins to name herself Miss Ugly Top of the Class is also an indication of the informal register. The writer uses idiomatic expressions to emphasize meaning. When the English teacher congratulates her for causing such a stir with a rugby player and when she was kicked out of the school choir. Now a few similes. Remember we cannot possibly discuss all the similes in the stories. These are a few examples but if you remember that when we discuss a simile we have to say what is being compared to what and why and we have to emphasize the specific characteristic shared by the two things compared. Then you will be able to answer any question on similes. When the girls were walking back from school that Friday afternoon, when Father Fakini tells her that she has to go with him to Tsolo, the writer says the winter sun seemed as lazy as we were. The writer compares the fact that the sun didn't want to shine as warmly as it does in summer with their laziness one Friday afternoon walking back from school. Another one, and this is the most famous one in the story, she says that her hair is as dry grass in winter. So she compares the dryness of her hair to the dryness of grass in winter. What is being compared to what and why? Both are dry because it hasn't rained for a while. Remember, a metaphor is a shortened simile where they do not use the words like or as, like they do in a simile, but they say the one thing is the other thing. When she is watching the performance of the Imbongi, she says she was frozen and dumb from disbelief and God knows what else. In the exam paper where this example was given, they did not say discuss the effectiveness or explain the metaphor. They said discuss the appropriateness of this metaphor. So it changes the angle from which you approach the question slightly. So the memo said she cannot believe that being a good student is the reason why the minister takes her to the meeting. She realizes that people notice her potential and she was overwhelmed by a great feeling of happiness. Fortunately, this question only counted one mark because I'm not sure how many of us would have been able to give that answer. Another example, which was also in an exam paper, so 
Long after the lights were switched off, my deep voice would be heard droning away. This, of course, is not only an example of a metaphor, it is also an example of onomatopoeia. So how do you explain this metaphor? In the same way that the noise of a machine travels or gets carried away, the speaker's loud voice reaches all the goals in the dormitory. Remember, she says that when she is coughing, what they call this droning, that it does not only help the other girls, it also helps her with her studies because she's read the book so long ago that she can barely remember them. So when she does this, it also helps her. And that was also a question in the previous paper. Personification, when an inanimate object is given human characteristics. The example we just had as a simile is also personification. The winter sun seemed as lazy as we were. So the writer gives the sun a human characteristic by saying it was just as lazy as the girls coming back from school on a Friday afternoon. Irony. The girls at the school are jealous of the narrator's academic success, yet they befriend her when they need help with their schoolwork. You will always see in an irony answer, there's always the word yet or instead. Because in irony, the opposite of what we expect is actually true. Another example, these were all examples from old exam papers. The girls tease the narrator for being ugly and they believe boys would not be interested in her. Yet the handsome star of the rugby team, our friend Seizwe, falls for her. The tone of the short story. Tone is the general character or attitude of a piece of writing, of a character in a story at a specific time, of the writer or the poet towards his subject matter. Now, at first, we have a gloomy, despairing and depressed tone because she lacks confidence, she has a low self-esteem, she doesn't like her at all. She calls herself Miss Ugly, top of the class. Then, after meeting Kira, actually already when Father Fakeni invites her away for the weekend to Tsolo, it changes to a cheerful tone. The narrator's tone changes after watching the praise poet performing and eventually discovers her talent. That is when the tone becomes cheerful. Then there's an excited, enthusiastic or proud tone as well. This one was also in a previous exam paper. The poet says, after writing her first poem, that she's never had a baby. But she supposes that the way she feels about her first poem is how one feels if one has a baby. The mood, remember the mood is influenced by the tone. If the tone is depressing, then the mood is also going to be depressing, despairing, not very cheerful. So it's a state of mind or feeling of either the reader or the characters in the short story. Here we have a sad, angry, emotional mood initially when she's still having trouble with her self-esteem and at the end it's happy and optimistic because she's found her purpose in life. She actually now believes that she is pretty, which should tell you that as soon as you find your purpose in life, you start liking yourself because then you realize this is why I have been born and I'm perfect to do what I have been born for. Now we have the level five questions. And remember in level five questions, they want your view. Do you agree or disagree with a statement? As I've said before, chances are that some of us will not get full marks if we only discuss one viewpoint, but if we can see this situation from both sides, yes and no, you agree and you disagree, then the chances of getting full marks are rather much higher. So Father Fakeni is instrumental in boosting the narrator's self-esteem. Discuss your view based firmly in the story. So if you say yes, you say Father Fakeni sees potential in a young girl and he takes her to his family's house. He tells her to sing in the church choir because her voice is normal, not ugly, like she used to believe. The only difference is it is resonant, which ties in perfectly with what she wants to do eventually. 
He takes her to a meeting where she meets the Imbongi and she's motivated and inspired to develop her full potential as well. And she gets to love her voice that can be used purposefully. So yes, Father Fakeni is instrumental in boosting her self-esteem. So she realizes that she's beautiful and talented. If you say no, Father Fakeni is not instrumental in boosting her self-esteem. Then you can use as motivational points that Father Fakena gives the narrator special treatment at the expense of other children. He only takes his favorite child to his family's house whilst leaving other children in the hostel. Hmm, not quite sure that I agree with that one. But it was an answer in the memo, and I mean, if the girls were jealous, this is quite a valid point. The narrator's self-discovery happens naturally. She could have realized her talent even without Father Fakeni's help. I just think it would have taken a much longer time to realize her potential. And then the narrator's sister always motivates her for her good work at school, and her teachers are also instrumental in boosting her self-esteem. They read her essays or share her good work with the rest of the class. And here's that one that I always tell you about. You have to determine the relevance of the title to the short story. So discuss the appropriateness of the title of the short story. The title focuses on the several moments that have transformed the narrator's life. She changes from an insecure person to a confident young woman by not being affected by what others say about her. She becomes comfortable about her looks and her distinctive voice. She's transformed by the realization that with her resonant voice, she can become the first female praise poet. And she changes when she discovers she has a gift for writing poetry as well and then performing those poems with her distinctive voice. Another level five question. The speaker is justified in wanting to be like Mrs. Fakeni. Justify your view. If you say yes, she is justified, you will say Mrs. Fakeni is beautiful and the speaker wishes to look like her. As looks are particularly important at this age, Mrs. Fakeni is a warm and loving person and she makes the speaker feel at home and she has a loving husband and family. If you said no, she should not want to be like Mrs. Fakeni. You can say she should accept and love herself irrespective of the way she looks, which is difficult at 17 years old when you are kind of being ostracized. She is intelligent and talented, and Father Fakeni sees the potential in her. And then to top it all, sees where he chooses her to be his girlfriend and not one of the other girls. Another level five question. The praise poet plays an important part in bringing about a change in the speaker. Discuss your view. If you think, yes, the praise poet brought about the transformation, you will say, when the speaker sees the praise poet performing, she's awestruck and she wants to be like him. His use of language and his movements impress and inspire her so much that she decides to become a praise poet herself. And after seeing the praise poet, she no longer sees herself as ugly and she realizes that everything about her is special and she gains self-confidence. If you say no, he was not important in bringing about the change. You will say, Father Fakeni encourages her to sing in the church choir after she has been kicked out of the school choir, making her realize that her voice is resonant, not ugly. He sees potential in her when he invites her to go away with his family, so her confidence grows as a result of the attention she receives. He introduces her to the praise poet, and that brings about a complete change in her life. A hybrid answer here, yes and no, would actually be the ideal, because both of them play an important part. So grade 12, the secret to doing well in paper 2. It's knowing your short story first and foremost and then you learn your notes because remember 80 percent of the paper consists of level one two and three questions which are knowledge questions and you have to apply your knowledge of the story so if you know your story even if you cannot answer these level five questions which if you know your work the chances are slim that you won't be able to do it. If you know your story, you will be able to answer all the level one, two, and three questions 
You must just read your paper carefully. And there you already have 80%. Good luck.